This is the Jeep Renegade facelift. You guys wanted to see that and we try to fulfill as many wishes as possible. Here on Autogefuel, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars, we're going to take a deeper look on the exterior, the interior and the driving experience. And one of the questions is today, does it also work in the entry-level version if you want to keep the price low? Let's find out together in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. The facelift changed some things on the front. For example, the LED daytime running light is now a circle around the main headlamp unit. I think an interesting style detail. And also the main headlamp unit is now available with full LED optional. Then typical Jeep front grille, seven gaps, in a vertical way. So although it's the smallest Jeep and the least expensive one, you still got some of the typical Jeep styling there and that also still transports somewhat of the lifestyle overall. This color here is called Omaha Orange. Also, you know, something that is really expressive, especially when you drive it then in the city. Contrasting off-road look in the lower part with the fog lamps right there. So overall, you get something small, but something that still appears somehow, you know, big, vertical, and somewhat still bulky off-roadish look. The length is at 4 meters 25, 14 foot or 167 inches. And also from a side perspective, it has this angular Jeep style, especially here around the wheel arches. Those ones are the optional 18 inch rims together with winter tires. However, they don't look too big. Contrasting mirror caps. This one here is a limited version, by the way, as for the trim level. Roof rails also in the same color than the side mirrors and very thick door handles. We'll also see soon how the doors are opening. That's also very interesting, I can tell you. And then also this very upright rear part. The whole car has a box style and you hardly find it nowadays. The platform, rather the Fiat 500X, by the way, has a way rounder style. But that's of course typical here for the Jeep that you get some more angularity. And by the way, the Jeep Compass, the bigger brother internally from the brand, is also on the same platform. So they're using different cars there on the same platform. That's usually good for the customer because you can get more quality if you have mass production on one platform and they also share a lot of technology details then. What do you think, guys? Interesting, by the way, this roof parts there too those are you can take them out completely and leave the car all open if you want it but the front part is also like just you know an electric roof that's also available i'll soon show you that now to the rear perspective where you still find those x-shaped tail lamps and with some easter egg inside there are a lot of easter eggs all over the car in the front by the way also at the windscreen where you see this willis mb jeep and here also at the rear with um, you know the front grill and the headlamp silhouette but here back to those x tail lamps interesting that they have the style of um, you know older canister fuel canister but here with the facelift they're not that dramatic anymore because they're all red for before there was a white contrast on the inside but i think you know you can still live with that change maybe it looks even more beautiful than before yeah maybe and by the way a real exhaust here so no fake exhaust at all with this jeep renegade and now to the engine overview wow a one liter three cylinder engine in a jeep 120 horsepower six speed manual gearbox and just front wheel drive who would guess that that this is ever happening in a jeep but maybe it also has an advantage and well i can tell you the first one the price really stays low that's really good if you're just using it in the city. Then you can also get a 1.3 liter four cylinder with 150 horsepower or 180 horsepower. The top spec is then is also possible to get it with all wheel drive. And then in the US, you also get a 2.4 liter naturally aspirated engine. And as for the diesel side, there's 1.6 liter with 120 horsepower or a two liter with 140 horsepower. 
that one then also available with all-wheel drive or a 170 horsepower version that is always with all-wheel drive. Let's take a look at the interior together. Here at the inside of the door, you've got hard pack materials. Interesting that in the lower part, this is the optional Beats audio system. Also some Easter egg with the front grille logo, the old Willis MB front grille style. And here is thick steering wheel. So this has somewhat of a rugged look. The dashboard, by the way, is soft touch. Then those seats here, very well done, all fabric also animal friendly then with some white contrast stitching and you can see different fabric parts being used also with some perforated structure here at the back in the lower part to keep you cooler in summer and again those seats here not cold in winter and not too hot in summer so it's a great choice and they are really neat very comfortable they are also in the lower part as detail with the electric lumbar support the rest is manual in this case the control and now let's get inside, easy entry, you still have somewhat upright seating position, so yes, you do have a true SUV feeling. You sit upright, those seats are very well made, they're very comfortable. Headroom wise, I'm more made 86 or 6 with 1, still have some room over my head and I have not put it to the lowest position, that would be like this even. But I always put it a little bit higher the seat because it's an also a little bit more upright as for the position. Talked about those roof panels, you can also just open them like this, at least the front part. If you want to take them out completely, that's also possible then with those handles that are installed right there. You have to um, release them right there. It's, you know, it's a double safety mechanism basically. Not sure why would you do that in, let's say, normal climate conditions, only if you live somewhere where you maybe never have any rain. So overall, I think a good seating position and it's quite spacious in the front already. Interior overview, soft touch here at the top dashboard. This one is the so-called oh dude handle <laughs> for off-road situations, which again, maybe in this spec won't happen so often. Five inch, seven inch or the 8.4 inch, this is the biggest one from the infotainment screens. Here you can see also with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto is also available and you can still play your music while checking the GPS out soon. A little bit more details to that. The steering wheel again is pretty much thick. That also adds to somewhat of the rugged look. Left side to control the instruments and on the right side, for example, for the adaptive cruise control. Those instruments with a nice <laughs> off-road style on the left side with the RPM ref limiter. Also with some digital screen on the inside, for example, for digital speed and on the right side, the analog speed. You still have a lot of analog gauges, for example, for the volume also for the climate control. So that's, you know, placed pretty much below here. So not too easy to do it while driving, especially because it's a little bit blocking here also with the shifting lever. That's, you know, one of, of my findings right here. In the lower part, one USB supply to put your smartphone then. Another 12 volt power supply and some cubby holes. Really like the material they used here on the shifting lever. That's, you know, that feels good. And that adds some more quality, especially since with this engine, you can only go with the manual gearbox. And the electric parking brake, brake next to some cup holes, again in this X shape. And, well, this, Armrest here is quite loose, so to say, not the best build quality here, but actually reasonable space below. And here a close-up at this screen. You can see you can also pinch and zoom like this. Um, responsiveness is quite okay, actually. Again, the view at the CarPlay system. So it's also very well using it now. Before that, it was just a very small part. They have better integrated right now. Here you can also activate the seat heating and also the, steer the steering wheel heating when the engine is running. As well as some more in-depth climate control, you can also do it right there. 
but again I would just use the analog ones in the lower part that's probably easier about that rear view camera well the resolution is really not too good uh, but then again, it's really maxed out to the full screen. That's good. But that's also maybe the reason then the resolution is basically blown up. And well, one thing I also criticize about that, as soon as you put out the reverse gear, it's gone. So maybe sometimes you are driving backwards and then maybe you're rolling just some centimeters while putting neutral or being to the front gear again. And then it doesn't stay those two or three seconds. It directly changes again. As for the rear, it's really cool that those doors open 80 degrees, so easy entry. And also, if you want to install some child seats, Isofix at the outside of the seats each, so that's really easier for parents then. Also, with a nice seat structure here on the back part, again with the perforated fabric here in the lower part that you sweat less in summertime. As for the legroom, well, it's not the longest car, um, but you know, if you hit your knees here a little bit, well, it's a soft part, so it's okay. Four adults can sit here in this car at the same time. However, if I drive with my size in the front, you see it's really getting close as for that one. Headroom in the rear also still fits with my size. And again, you could also take out the rear part here if you like, but you, know, you can store it in the trunk underneath this cover. That's possible. It's always the question just if you want to do that work. Then there's a USB supply here also for the rear passengers. And there's a ski hatch, this middle part, also functions as the cup holders for the rear passengers. Let's open the trunk right here. And you can see it's a square opening indeed. It's not too long as the vehicle is also not too long. Length here is 74 centimeters and the width is just under a meter. So yeah, that's let's say like about 95 in centimeters. And let me also put a cabin trolley here inside that you can see the dimensions. You can still put it up upside like this or in a vertical way, but let me show you the maximum setup we have here. Here we go. What about the front seat? So this is always something is it possible to flip it completely. Yes, indeed. So that's really cool. Push it backward and now front well not completely like but like this it's already quite good so then you're a little bit more flexible and now let's push it all the way through so this is then two meters and this is about 150 in meters to my front seat and in the you know the co-driver seat here then you can easily reach that two meters. So yeah, not the lo uh, biggest car on the exterior, but still somewhat flexible. And maybe it's also good to remove this one here for you. Then you have the best overview to what's really possible to put in that vehicle. Here we go. Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge with the Jeep Renegade. <laughs> yeah, it's the Renegade. Glad you joined us here. It's always cool to have you here on board because, I mean, I know you're not literally sitting next to me, but I hope you really get the impression that you do. And somehow I also feel your vibes, you know? Maybe something to do with energy flow or something, you know, whatever. You're right here, right, <laughs> with me. So, and this Jeep Renegade, as I said initially, you might think, ah, you know, it's just a very small Jeep. It, is it a real one? This version here doesn't even have all-wheel drive. Hmm, okay, is that really true to the brand? But then you start driving and realize, hmm, it's still fun. It's really fun. So, you still have an SUV feeding. You sit upright and high. Especially, I always um, tell you to do that, put the seat a little bit higher even if you're taller because the seat surface itself is a little bit more upright then that gives you more comfort and then also stresses again the feeling that you are in the SUV. Yes, of course, you're not that high as in, a, in one of the bigger Jeep models, of course, but still it gives you a decent Jeep feeling. I recently also tested the Fiat 500X in the facelift version which is on the 
you know, technology side, the same vehicle, same platform, same engines and so on. And indeed, it does not make the biggest difference by driving. I think it's rather something psychological. So, yeah, I, I'm, you know, I'm feeling different when driving the Jeep Renegade here. Maybe it's, this is, you know, this, I think this brand thing, somehow it, it's, it's, you know, it still does work. But of course, if you then think about as a car reviewer, they are similar, of course, yeah. But then again, thinking about that this one here is maybe just like a thousand euros extra than the Fiat 500X or something. Why not take the Renegade and take the Jeep logo, you know? <laughs> so, suspension wise, I think they've done a good job. Um, it's actually, especially now in the face, a little bit more refined, everything. It's not too soft, also not too stiff. When you try to shake it a little bit up, it doesn't shake too much. So it stays relatively calm. The steering is super, super light. It feels a little bit artificial. So, especially when I do something like this, you know, like fast turns, it sometimes feels a little bit like in a computer game. So a little bit more feedback connection to the road would be better. Then again, it's a Jeep. It's primarily thought on the whole you know, characteristic to be an off-road model and usually the steering on off-road model is not really connected to this to the tarmac it's then rather connected to the off-road driving so you can surely argue about that but i think when they put it for the street mainly they could work a little bit on that feeling but in the whole fiat corporation you know they are not too keen on that subject in, in general or have not spent um, you know too much thought to that now I'm standing here at the traffic light, soon we'll continue and start-stop is activated so the engine has shut off. Again, that's nothing that would be very good for the, for the engine, also on the long-term run, so I'm not a fan of those systems. But those are meanwhile mandatory and also manufacturers get lower in consumption on paper from those and that's also the main reason they implement it not that you you save fuel it's mainly that the manufacturer saves fuel in the test cycle so they don't have to pay so much uh, fees you know to like those co2 certificates and so on interesting also that we have the front wheel drive version here probably in a couple of years back i never would have thought that i would ever drive a jeep without all-wheel drive well it's the case today First time, yeah. First time ever I'm driving a Jeep with all-wheel drive. Uh, sorry, without all-wheel drive, of course, I meant in this case. You see, <laughs> you, you, you can't get rid of the all-wheel drive. Even, it, it's even influencing the language. But then again, for the city here, it's totally fine. You know, you don't feel that much anyway. And in this platform, it's front plus rear anyway, if it's an all-wheel drive. You know, the bigger petrols and the bigger diesels, they offer the all-wheel drive but it's also not this standard permanent all-wheel drive we know from the big cheap models. And when you're not using this car off-road, you can really also live without the all-wheel drive. And I really think it's very interesting to keep the price low because so often we have really great cars and we could say, this is good, this is good, this is good. And then you look at the price tag and it's like 60,000, 70,000. And you think about like, okay, if you have a lot of money, fine, but some other, let's say, on you know normal people ordinary customers with a normal budget they cannot afford that or don't want to afford that then spend so much money on a car and i found this combination is so interesting because you can really keep the price low so twenty-five thousand euros entry in germany for the renegade and then for this you know also the spec and then thirty thousand altogether this very test vehicle here thirty thousand euros and considering for a Jeep, that's still pretty affordable, especially then for the European prices, because you know in the US the Jeeps are also way cheaper in comparison to to Europe, for example. Also, just with a manual gearbox. Whoa, that was live on tape, out of fuel here, and interesting. That was the emergency braking system, and I can tell you, now I'm really awake. <laughs> Wow. I mean, it was a, you know, totally normal situation, no problem here, but I think it's 
good that we actually see that it is working. I was already on the break, but you know, imagine I would be like looking down or looking at the infotainment system or something. Then it's really good to have the system and also good to be able to test it here in live conditions. We also have some other assistant systems on board right here. Um, that's the ACC, for example, the adaptive cruise control. And I can set it here on the steering wheel and it's also keeping the distance, it's an option. Let's see if the car is reducing the speed right now. I'm not on the brakes. Yeah, speed is being reduced. That's well done. Of course, with the manual gearbox in connection, that's what the car did right now. It cancelled the ACC below a speed of 30 kilometers an hour because it would otherwise stall the engine. So the ACC combination with automatic is always better for sure. But still nice to have it for motorway use. On the motorway, we'll head out to the motorway right now. I will also show you the blind spot monitor, which is integrated here as an option in the side mirrors. That's also important to have. The shifting here is actually quite nice. So not much resistance from the gearbox and also the top part, as I explained to you earlier in the interior part of this review, it has actually quite decent build quality here. So that adds to this quality feeling here. You know, we had some parts where we were not too keen on, on the interior part here, then other ones are better or have been improved, for example, for the facelift. So I think they also made a step further right there. One key element to, from the facelift to me is something I also realized in the Fiat 500X driving review, the noise insulation has been improved. So especially at lower speeds, it's really silent, really cool. And I love also while driving those upright A pillars. This is also different to the Fiat 500X. So I appreciate this driving surrounding here in the Renegade. It's just some, you know, more spacious, especially when you're traveling or something, you feel you have, you know, air room around you. Yes, this cockpit comes quite far towards you. So that's on one hand a little bit bulky. On the other hand, it adds to somewhat of a traveling feeling here for sure. I will soon also push the engine a little bit more when I'm on the motorway, so we can see more about the performance. We cannot expect too much. The acceleration figure is 11.2 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. So yeah, that's not fast at all. It's a three cylinder. We cannot expect too much from that. By the way, due to the three cylinder stuff, this also has a unique sound. They strangely always sound a little bit more sonorous than the four cylinder. So I think the three cylinder sound is actually better than the one from the four cylinder. Pretty interesting, right? Um, you know, the, with the diesel, the consumption was also not too low. So um, with this vehicle, you cannot really say that you should always go for the diesel just to save fuel. Also the stronger diesel had the all-wheel drive that is also fuel consuming. So that would be even an argument for the front-wheel drive only, since you could possibly save some fuel when, you know, no all-wheel drive system is being running. Also, this car is lighter. This one here I'm driving at the moment with manual gearbox and the front wheel drive is the lightest version that Jeep has. And that's really a good thing, you know? Yeah, the steering is also very light, I told you earlier, but yeah, to me completely without field. So it's, you know, it's a complete arcade style. Um, but then again, the only thing that's good from it, you can very easily park in and out. So that's, super easily done with that one. Now we're getting on the motorway. I go back to the second gear. Now, for example, we are also going uphill. Consumption so far with before accelerating, by the way, seven liters on one kilometers. I'll tell you um, soon also what it is in MPG, in US and UK MPG. So um, let me get to motorway now. And then let's say third gear, 70 to 100. In kilometers or I'll now put it to MPH 44 MPH let's go and that's 60 MPH just under 100 kilometers that's quite nice for reviewing right kilometers per hour miles per hour kilometers per hour miles per hour kilometers per hour miles per hour Homer Simpson style you know? <laughs> so really great for car reviewing for sure 
So now at about 60 miles an hour, noise insulation is really still quite good. So they really improved that. 96 kilometers, let's put it to 100. And let's also shift in the fifth gear first. And we can even put it to the sixth gear. That is basically the highway gear to save fuel. Not much acceleration happening there, but we can then keep the RPMs low. So now at about 100 kilometers an hour or, you know, 60 miles an hour, we're just above 2000 RPM. And so we can keep it lower for a lower consumption. Of course, if you use this car with, you know, not such a good wind <laughs> characteristics on high speed the consumption will drop uh, drop uh, go up but we can also drop it to set here about seven liters or more kilometers that's actually quite okay it should always be lower but then again look at how the car is actually looking on the outside and but still for the small engine i would have expected that we can score somewhat less but then again, the other engines are also not really better in this respect. So I think it's really not too bad to go for this engine. Again, to me also always very important to take a perspective of customers who maybe also do not want to spend so much money on the vehicle. Now it's also interesting as for the handling in the roundabout circle here. Let's all see the luggage in the rear, if that is flying around big time because that's always happening here yeah just a little bit but it seems to be that the floor in the trunk is holding the luggage a little better in some of the other vehicles and you see that actually felt quite good going in the circle again not too much feeling in the steering wheel but the car also did not lean over too much so overall I think well done I still have fun driving this vehicle there's also the advantage that it's rather a short vehicle, so it's still somewhat agile to drive. Now when I'm getting on the motorway again, um, let's see if we can see someone is coming from behind. Yeah, now look at the blind spot monitor, which should be... Ah, that went, went over to the next track now. Uh, because there's this small symbol then, and then you get um, yellow flashing. I'll try to induce it um, down there very soon. Uh, and then when you also use the turning indicator, then you get a beep. And it's actually somewhat that is <laughs> as, as bad as the, um, the, the automa uh, automatic braking warning. So those warning sounds here in that vehicle are really harsh, so to say. But then again, if you think about it, sometimes that might also be a good idea. <laughs> that they are a little bit waking you up. So again, I get a relaxed feeling for this vehicle. Better noise insulation now in the facelift. The engine is doing a good job as long as you don't uh, push it too much. Well, now I'm getting the blind spot on the other side, but I think you cannot see it. Let me see if I go to the right. Maybe someone goes to the left now. Yeah, here we go. There it is. The yellow dot. That's good. Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm already driving 54, but then some guys always want to drive faster. In this case, you see it has been paying off for him to, ex uh, to exceed the speed limit because he got the green traffic light. That's quite often the case, right? You know, to drive above the speed limit, then you get the traffic lights, and the one that obey the speed limit, they have to stand still at the red traffic light and think about, ah, come on, really? But then again, you know, it's the law. By the way, as we're coming to some you know, countryside action, here we go. With this panoramic roof. Well, it's not panoramic roof as for watching through while it's closed, but you can open it also in an electric way. And that's always good to leave some more light. And this is really a lot of fun now, you know. The wind noise here at 50 kilometers now is not too bad. This is really relaxed. So I really like that feature, even though if you cannot look through the other way, but then again, you're better insulated against heat in um, hot summer time and so on. And I love convertibles. And when I don't have a convertible, then I really like to be able to open the roof right here. As I said earlier, you can also remove the front and the 
recover permanently. Yeah, if you maybe in LA or something, then it, it might pay off. But usually when you're in Germany, you always have to think, ah, you know, at some point it will rain. Well, not last summer, but usually in the normal summers. And so I think it's better to have this solution than here where you can always open and, and close it once again. Definitely nice to have it. So I think, especially now since they refined some, th some stuff here with the facelift, actually a really decent drive. So again, I can just stress the feature. Yeah, it's maybe not the most spectacular Jeep and it's not the one that really appeals to a typical Jeep off-road customer. And you say, ah, oh, come on. One without all-wheel drive, really? Yeah, but then also one with a decent price, and that's really important. And if you really think you would primarily use this one here on road driving and don't care about off-roading, and you need also a vehicle that suits the city driving, where you can also find a good parking slot or something, then this one here definitely has it, its advantages. And yeah, I think sometimes also car reviewers have not, you know, not only to have, oh, yeah, take the most expensive, sportiest, super high trim something version. We always try to, you know, get the best price performance deal for you. And I think if you think about the whole Jeep model lineup, yeah, it's probably the least off-road capable one. But thinking about price performance, you can already get some decent Jeep fun here and also in driving I mean pretty relaxed comfortable here upright seating position still got some of the Jeep touches and then again for the least price you'll get a Jeep 4. And now to the conclusion for today with the Jeep Renegade. Well the facelift has updated some things first of all you know the LED daytime running light I think it's a nice addition for that for sure also on the interior, better noise insulation, some work on the materials, also infotainment system wise. So I think good updates here with the facelift. Also a lot of the new engines. We tested one of those today with the three cylinder in front wheel drive. Really strange on the one hand for a Jeep, yes. But then again, if you're not using it off-road, it's really fine if you want to keep the price low. And thinking about the German Jeep here, German market price for 30,000 euros. Of course on the German Jeep this one is here built in Italy together with the Jeep Renegade. So yes also not a true US Jeep. A lot of things it's which is not really true Jeep style. But then again if you look at the exterior and also some of the interior you can say yeah you still get the Jeep lifestyle even though some core Jeep elements are really not fulfilled. But again for the city and for non-off-road use, it's really totally fine and you get this Jeep feeling still somehow. And then in this case also for quite a low price. Well, if you think about some other details, I well, just want to mention that the panoramic roof, about 70 kilometers now or 45 mph, that's still quite okay. Everything above that, then the wind noise pick up just a little bit. And as for consumption, as it remains at about 7 liters, and that's 34 mpg or 41 mpg in the UK. So, thank you so much for tuning in to today's Autogefühl episode, and also see you next time.